Would you please tell us your name? Linda Adams. And what have you brought to the harvest today? I've brought uh, newspaper articles. I've brought some objects that relate to the history of Seelands Grove. I've brought some photographs, um, one or two postcards. How old are like the newspapers and the photographs and stuff? Uh, some of the the newspaper articles go back to the 1930s up to 2009. Um, some of the photographs are from the late 1800s. Um, I just tried to take a bring a cross section of a lot of different objects I have. How did you acquire these items? My mother can't throw anything away, and unfortunately I'm blessed with the same disease. So what are some of your favorite items? Well, um, some of them actually relate to my husband's family. We both grew up in Sealands Grove and have lived here basically all our lives, so we have you know, a long history with Seelands Grove and things that have happened in the uh, area and the borough. Would you like to show us some of the newspapers? Or the sure. Um, I'll start with the most recent. This is from the 2009 um, newspaper when Seelands Grove high school's football team won the state championship. Would you like to hold it up for the camera? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, one article relates to my husband's grandfather who was not from Seelands Grove but he married into a family from Seelands Grove and he was a captain in the army uh, who served in um, France with um, Pershing and when he died they had a big parade um, with the uh, riderless horse and the boots backwards and so that made an impression on people in Seelands Grove. This is an article about that parade and about his service. He was actually from South Carolina but as I said he married into a Seelands Grove family. If I talk too long let me know. Go ahead. Um, I have some newspaper articles and some objects that relate to the banana split that was in the world's longest at that time uh, banana split in Seals Grove in 1982. It was a um, fundraiser for the Seals Grove High School um, band boosters and so they had a banana split maybe already know that. Banana split running from basically the Green Bridge at the north end of town to the south end of town. So these are some things from the banana split. And the guy that was in charge of it's still around so he could he would probably be better to tell you what's going on than I would, but these are some old newspaper articles and pictures. It was a big deal, you know, they they stopped the traffic and blocked off the road and all that sort of thing. Um, in the early 1950s, um, Seals Grove celebrated its centennial. And at that time, a group of people from Seelands Grove um, decided that it would be a good idea to 
stage an outdoor pageant based on similar to pageants that are still going on in North Carolina. It's called Out of This Wilderness. Um, Alex Kleinsorg, who was a um, teacher at Susquehanna for a long time, um, was the director. And so my family was involved with that. And um, it was staged at the racetrack. And they were hoping to make it, you know, kind of thing that kept going on and on. Never really quite made that, but they tried. Um, but it was a big deal for a couple years, and a lot of community people were involved in it. I have a lot of advertising stuff. Um, do you want me to tell you all this stuff? <laughs> okay. I guess you can, you can always delete it. <laughs> Press the whole delete button. Um, this is a, a pamphlet about the third annual exhibit of Seals Grove Industrial Art Shop. It was in 1929, and my grandfather was involved with it as well as my husband's, one of my husband's relatives, and it has a bunch of um, advertisements from Seals Grove businesses. Um, I have a billy club that, the story goes, uh, belonged to the Seals Grove Chief of Police, and this is his whistle. And um, he was related to my mother's family. Uh, his name was William Wolf, and this is an article about um, his death and tells a little bit about it. He um, had served in the um, war or war in Africa, and uh, I always got the feeling from my mother that he was sort of a ne'er-do-well or something like that, that he was you know, taking off for Africa when he should have been staying home and taking care of his family. This is from... Um, a certificate of honorable discharge from the uh, Pennsylvania volunteers uh, during the Civil War. My uh, relative Jacob Jarrett entered the the service in 1862 and was discharged um, in 1863. This is a Dusty. This is a uh, descriptive list, an account of pay and clothing of the same Jacob Jarrett um, when he was discharged from the, his service during the Civil War. Um, my same family, my um, mother's grandmother um, at that time and and I think there's some people who still do it uh, they call it hexing and it involves home remedies and uh, it involved the use of a red string I don't know what that was all about but anyway this is a list of um, some of the treatments and it was only done by women. Um, this was uh, a description of some of the treatments that were used, for example, dropsy, uh, stop bleeding, bad hearing. I'm soon gonna need that myself. And I believe there's a list here, too, of people that she hexed. Um, it wasn't like, you know, putting a spell on somebody, but it was like home remedies to help treat various problems. Um, on my father's side, my father was a graduate of Susquehanna. Um, my mother started going to SU, but um, I guess it was during the summer of her 
between her freshman and sophomore year, she uh, was able to get a job as a secretary, uh, and she made a dollar a week, so she felt she needed to uh, contribute to her family's income and not return to school, so that's what she did. But Susquehanna was kind enough to give her an honorary degree later on for various reasons. So anyway, my dad had, um, my dad was Simon Rhodes. He graduated in 29, I believe, from SU, which was a bad time to graduate because the Great Depression started later that year. Um, my dad always said that he, he got a job working at a bank because he spoke Pennsylvania Dutch. And uh, that's what landed him the job at the bank so he could talk to the farmers and stuff and try to, you know, take care of their banking needs. This was um, my father's obituary um, when he died in 2001. And um, he was later involved with Susquehanna because um, he was involved with farming um, and in various other business activities. Um, and Susquehanna was happy to take um, possession of some of the farmland that my dad owned. So, for example, where the present-day soccer field is was part of his farmland, where the parking lot going up to the, uh, uh, well, the parking lot over by the new dorms on Sassafras Street, some of that was his land uh, that he donated to Susquehanna. The parking lot behind the present admissions building what was a gift of his to um, Susquehanna. So I guess we're not here to talk just about that kind of stuff, but um, he does have a connection to Susquehanna. Um, my father was also a big game hunter and he uh, had a large collection of trophies, which I know is not politically correct now, and I sort of keep that to myself, but back then it was more acceptable, I guess, than it is now. Anyway, he always tried to use um, his hunting experiences to benefit the community or the kids. And um, my family was involved with Steel and Grove High School Band. So when my dad would go on safari, he would take um, 16 millimeter film of his travels and he would sometimes show them. Um, this is an example of a ticket. Uh, this was to benefit the, the high school band boosters. Um, and back then, you know, there wasn't that was back in the 50s, early 60s. There wasn't TV that you could watch all this kind of stuff on TV, so people got, people were interested in that sort of thing, so that was a big deal. Um, Rolling Green Park was a big, big uh, part of growing up in Seals Grove. This is a um, ticket for some of the rides and that sort of thing. Um, and on the back, there's a um, advertisement for the New Way Drive-In Theater, which was located where the present day Walmart is. And so that too was a big deal when I was in high school and before. Uh, but I didn't have a car before I was in high school, so I didn't make it to the New Way. Um, in 1938, there was a big fire in Sealands Grove, and uh, this is a picture of the uh, 
remains of what was left of the buildings that burned down. Um, the fire was next to where present day Isabella's restaurant is. And so that was a big, big event in the history of Salem's Grove. This is a newspaper article. Uh, these are some other pictures. And I apologize that things are so yellowed and that sort of thing. Um, I guess that's what happens when stuff gets old, or at least if you don't take care of it properly. Oh, going back to William Wolf, the um, the uh, chief of police. This is a picture of him. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why he was dressed that way. I don't think that was his police uniform, but I guess he figured he cut a dashing figure, you know, whatever he was doing. Um, there's some, I have some newspaper articles about um, my family's business um, and farms and that sort of thing. The, um, another, I have an article here about Little Norway, which was a big skating rink when um, we were growing up. It was located between the the present day bypass and the and Penn's Creek. If you're going over the bridge to the island, um, I spent hours there in the winter, and apparently my mother did as well from this article, which she never told me about that part of her life, but that's okay. Uh, this is just a. It's from the Snyder County Trust Company. Um, which I, I brought it because it has a lot of um, businesses, Seams Grove business advertisements on it, um, businesses that no longer exist but were a big deal a while ago. Um, this I think is kind of interesting. I don't know if it'll photograph well because it's in the frame. Um, my husband's family came from Wales in the 1870s. Um, they first settled in Shenandoah and then they moved to Seals Grove. He was a tailor and this is a picture of his, the Phillips Tailor Shop. Um, the Seals Grove Post Office is right here and the tailor shop was right there. And. Um, he and his wife had six kids, six had red hair, six had black hair, six were born in the U.S., six were born in Wales, um, so there were a lot of them around, and, and uh, one of them married this guy that was, that served in uh, France in the First World War with um, Pershing. And how did you hear about the History Harvest? I read about it in the newspaper, and I think two of the the gentlemen that that were involved in it were on the radio. Rob and Ryan. Yeah, yeah, a couple of days ago. So I heard about it then, and I thought nobody else cares about this. Stuff.